This is an ABC News special report. Hi, I'm Diane Macedo. We are coming on the air because multiple law enforcement officials say a person of interest is now being questioned in the New York City murder of United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson. They say he's identified as 26 year old Louise Mangione. Here's New York City Mayor Eric Adams with an update. Thompson of United Healthcare was the victim of a senseless act of violence. Uh, our officers have been working around the clock. Uh, many of them uh, did not go home uh, to uh, pursue this individual. It was crucial that we were able to remove him off the streets of America, and we were going to seek him out no matter, no matter where he was at the time. And so this is a strong person of interest. Uh, the police commissioner and uh, chief of detectives will go over uh, where we are right now in the investigation. He matches the description of the identification we've been looking for. He's also in possession of several items that we believe will connect him uh, to this incident. How did we do it? Uh, good old fashioned police work. Uh, the chief of detectives and the police commissioner made the decision uh, to release uh, as much of a photo that we that we had at the time, we sent it across the country, and someone, a McDonald's employee, did something we ask every American to do. If you see something, say something, but most importantly, do something. And they did. And because of that, we believe we have a strong person of interest to deal with this case. I want to now turn it over to the police commissioner of the city of New York, Commissioner Tish. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Earlier this morning in Altoona, Pennsylvania, members of the Altoona Police Department arrested Luigi Mangioni, a 26-year-old male on firearms charges. At this time, he is believed to be our person of interest in the brazen targeted murder of Brian Thompson, CEO of United Healthcare, last Wednesday in Midtown Manhattan. The suspect was in a McDonald's and was recognized by an employee who then called local police. Responding officers questioned the suspect, who was acting suspiciously and was carrying multiple fraudulent IDs as well as a U.S. passport. Upon further investigation, officers recovered a firearm on his person, as well as a suppressor, both consistent with the weapon used in the murder. They also recovered clothing, including a mask, consistent with those worn by our wanted individual. Also recovered was a fraudulent New Jersey ID, matching the ID our suspect used to check into his New York City hostel before the shooting incident. Additionally, officers recovered a handwritten document that speaks to both his motivation and mindset. NYPD detectives are en route to Pennsylvania as we speak to as we seek to interview the subject further. This apprehension is thanks to the tireless work of the greatest detectives in the world and, of course, the strong relationships we have with our local law enforcement partners on every level local, state, and federal, we all serve the same public safety mission. And this case, which captured the attention of an entire nation, is another example of how connected we are and how important it is to work together, share information, and pursue every lead. For just over five days, our NYPD investigators comb through thousands of hours of video, followed up on hundreds of tips, and processed every bit of forensic evidence, DNA, fingerprints, IP addresses, and so much more to tighten the net. We deployed drones, canine units, and scuba divers. We leveraged the domain awareness system, Argus cameras, and conducted aviation canvases. And our detectives also went door to door, interviewing potential witnesses and doing the good old fashioned police work that our investigators are famous for. This combination of old school detective work and new age technology is what led to this result today. And we must also acknowledge the instrumental role the media 
and the public played in this case. The images that we shared with the public were spread far and wide, and the tips we received led to the recovery of crucial evidence. We should never underestimate the power of the public to be our eyes and our ears in these investigations. This is the third time in three weeks that a member of the public has seen something and said something and done something that led to a high-profile arrest. The triple stabbing homicide in Manhattan, the gunpoint robberies in Queens during which an NYPD officer was shot, and now this. Now, the case will continue through the criminal justice process. And while we are proud of today's accomplishment, we must, of course, remember that a family is in mourning. I want to again extend my sympathies to Brian's family, his co-workers, and all who knew him. Finally, I want to thank the women and men of the NYPD especially our Detective Bureau per personnel, with a strong assist from, from our intelligence analysts. We also thank the SAC of the FBI's Criminal Investigative Division, Leslie rodriguez Beckshees, And I want to commend the staff of the Manhattan DA's office, and especially DA Alvin Bragg. He has been working with us 24-7 on this case, and I am incredibly grateful for his partnership. I'll now pass it along to our great chief of detectives, Joe Kenny, who will provide additional information. Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon. As the commissioner stated earlier, a male was taken into custody today in Altoona, Pennsylvania this morning. He has been identified as Luigi Nicholas Mangioni. He's a male 26 years old. He was born and raised in Maryland. We know he, have he has ties to San Francisco, California, and his last known address was Honolulu, Hawaii. He has no prior arrest history in New York. Members of the NYPD Detective Bureau are currently traveling to Pennsylvania with members of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office to interview this subject. This case was brought to a successful conclusion based on the coordinated effort between numerous NYPD units, including the Intelligence and Counterterrorism Bureau, our federal partners at the FBI, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, and of course, members of the Altoona Police Department in Pennsylvania. On Thursday, one day after this crime was committed, the NYPD released a photo of the shooter in this case. This picture was obtained by the NYPD during one of their extensive video canvases. We took that photograph and we asked for the public's help in identifying this subject, and the public responded. Hundreds of tips began to pour into our hotline. Each tip was investigated thoroughly, and we began to re release additional photographs as they came into our possession. The NYPD provided these photos to numerous media outlets. Local, national, and international outlets released the photo via television, print, social media, and online content. Luckily, a citizen in Pennsylvania recognized our subject and called local law enforcement. Members of the Altoona Police Department responded to the call, and based on their investigation, they notified the NYPD. This investigation is still active and ongoing. Thank you very much. First, and then we'll... Mark? Uh, I had a couple questions about the <clears throat> document that he was found in possession with. Can you go a little bit more in depth about those motivations that you mentioned? Was that CEO specifically named in that document? Was there anything more about him wanting to go after others? <coughs> and also in that document, was there any indication that explains us how the level of detail that he went into killing him? Like, is there anything else? Like I said, that, that document is currently in the possession of the Altoona Police Department as part of their investigation. But just from briefly speaking with them, um, we don't think that there's any specific threats to other people mentioned in that document. But it does seem that he has some, uh, some ill will toward corporate America. Over here, sir. Uh, MJ? Chief, uh, was the suspect wearing a mask at the time he was spotted in the McDonald's? And also, uh, you know, criminal cases often have a linchpin. Can you point to a single linchpin that helped crack this case? There's numerous linchpins in this case in the fact that we've recovered an enormous amount of forensic evidence, an enormous amount of video, and once again, you know, with your help and the public's help. So I couldn't, I really couldn't put it on one thing, but if I had to, it would be the release of that photograph from the media. Dean? Uh, you, uh, do you, what you said he had a passport on him. Do you believe he was trying to flee the country? And also, are you still looking for any evidence in Central Park from regards to the bike? 
Um, we had divers in the water yesterday that came up negative results. Uh, the passport, we don't believe that he was planning on doing any traveling at this time. We don't think he, at this point in our investigation, we don't think he was trying to flee the country. The person at the McDonald's, were they buying food? What were they doing at that exact moment? It was an employee at the McDonald's. Right. But what was the suspect doing? He was sitting there eating. Um, will the suspect be brought back to New York and charged here? And when? We're going to have to work that out with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office uh, in Altoona, Pennsylvania. He's going to be facing gun charges there. And at some point, we'll work out uh, through extradition to bring him back to New York to face charges here, working with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Anita? Hi. Uh, Anita from The New York Post. I was just hoping to get more details on the capture itself. Did he put up a fight? Did he say anything to cops? And we've also reported that um, he published online anti-health care industry rantings. Can you share with us some of the services that he posted on? We're, we're still working through his social media. We're going to do a complete scrub of that. Uh, preliminarily, like I said, he seems that he has some ill will toward corporate America, but that will all come out as part of our investigation. We're, we're not done here. We're still going to be putting this together. We're still going to be working very hard to bring this to a successful conclusion. Itself, with, did he put up a fight? Did he say anything to police? I, I don't have that information. Shana? Oh, sorry. Uh, can you elaborate on uh, how he got there, uh, the path he took from Port Authority and uh, on the George Washington Bridge to uh, Altoona, PA? Same thing. That's, that's This just happened this morning. We'll be working, backtracking his, uh, his steps from New York to Altoona, Pennsylvania. I was going to ask if he knew anything, if he took a bus to Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia first, and then somehow got to Altoona. But We're still just... working on that. We're still working through that. Is there any indication that anybody else was helping him from the inside, you know, as far as tracking the CEO's movements? Once again, we're still working this investigation very hard. It's not at its conclusion yet. That could come out during our investigation, but as of right now, we have no indication that that took place. Chief, did he have any weapons or anything like that with him when he was arrested? He was in possession of a ghost gun that had the capability of firing a 9mm round and a suppressor. Joe? Can you get into a little bit about the technical aspects of the investigation? I know you deployed an unprecedented amount of technology. You also activated the Sentry program through Intel. Can you talk about how that is going to play into actually building the case <coughs> as far as cell phone and all of the other technical aspects of what you've done? In this, in this case, it, it really came down to technology was the use of drones in Central Park and really comes down to the, to the video canvas that we did. We used every source of video that we could collect, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours from hundreds of sources, and that helped bring this to, to where we are right now. Uh, the gun is, is it believed to be the gun you used in the shooting? And can you, there was some talk that it was a veterinarian type gun. Is that accurate? No, as of right now, the information we're getting from Altoona is that the gun uh, appears to be a, a ghost gun. May have been made on a 3D printer. The capability of fire, firing a 9mm round, obviously, that will come out during our ballistics testing. Um, Oliver? Yeah, Oliver Bonds from the Financial Times. Do you have any indication like how long this like handwritten, is it a handwritten manifesto that you found um, on the suspect? And then also whether or not he put it online at all? Don't know if it's online. As of right now, it's a handwritten three-page document. Chief, does he have ties to that area, and was he someone who you knew by name before his arrest? We believe he may have t attended college in Pennsylvania, but like I said earlier, he has ties to Maryland and California and Hawaii. And you knew him by name before today. Was, was his name on your radar? Excuse me? Was his name on your radar? Was he someone who, who you had been looking into before his arrest? No, we did have, not have his name prior to today. Okay. Uh, did, does he have any prior arrests? I know there were none for New York City, but is there any prior arrests anywhere else in the country? We have not come across any arrests in the country. Um, I just, Chief, hi, how are you? Um, on two things. On the ghost gun, is it something you're going to be looking into to see if he made it himself? And put the, can he make that himself? Or is that, would he have to buy the gun the way it was? No, that, but once again, that'll be part of our investigation as we follow up. Obviously, he's going to face murder charges, but is there any chance that he could face any other charges because of, he was targeting a uh, you know the CEO and because of his writings and other things that we're now finding uh, on him? Protected that federal that, charges or that determination charges? will be made by uh, Alvin Bragg. Yes, what connections does he have in Pennsylvania? That, you know, like, are they in Altoona specifically? We believe he attended college in Pennsylvania. Does he know anybody in Pennsylvania? Or 
wouldn't be able to tell you that. All right, we're going to take one more question from Shooting Marla, and then we're going to go. Um, is, is there, what, you talk about the manifesto having uh, said things against uh, corporations, but specifically United Healthcare, and do you believe that uh, Mangione acted alone? We believe at this point our investigation is leaning toward he was acting alone. So, like I stated earlier, we're still, we're still working through the investigation. We're not stopping today. And as far as, far as the manifesto, like I said, I, I don't have the complete details of that. It's in the possession of the Altoona Police Department. We're going to shift to Good job, Chief. Commissioner. Chief Maggi. We've been listening there to New York City officials confirming a person of interest is now being questioned in the New York City murder of United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson. They say he's identified as 26 year old Luigi Mangioni. A nationwide manhunt has been underway since Thompson was shot and killed outside a New York City hotel on Wednesday. Now police are saying they're questioning Mangioni in Altoona, Pennsylvania, saying, among other things, he was carrying fake IDs, a written document, and a gun similar to the one used. In the assassination style killing, I want to bring in ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, covering the story from us, uh, for us from the very beginning. Uh, Aaron, what do you make of what officials are saying here and how many things they, they found on Mangione's person? Authorities said they did not have his name, the name Luigi Mangione, before a heads up McDonald's employee in Altoona, Pennsylvania, recognized him. From images police had shared through the media around the world, and police credited that individual with recognizing the person, calling police who were able to take him into custody, where he's now charged on gun offenses. He had a 9 millimeter ghost gun capable of firing a 9 millimeter round, similar to the murder weapon in the Brian Thompson case. The authorities credited good old-fashioned police work with getting that image out from the countless hours of surveillance footage from 60,000 surveillance cameras in New York City, and then the, uh, the, the heads up uh, member of the public who called it in. But until that moment, Diane, they did not know who their suspect was. And Aaron, what more can you tell us about the fake IDs they say this person of interest had on him and this written document they're saying may speak to motivation here? These writings uh, are described as uh, having some kind of ill will toward corporate America, according to the chief of detectives, Joe Kenny. I can tell you from several law enforcement sources that they, they speak uh, of, of anger and frustration uh, toward the insurance industry and may give the authorities some window into <clears throat> into uh, Luigi Mangione's alleged motivation. Uh, the, uh, the, the ID was fake a New Jersey ID that was very similar to the fake ID the suspect used to check into a hostel on Manhattan's Upper West Side. And those clues uh, give police confidence that this is their guy. All thanks, they say, to someone seeing something and saying something. And I want to bring in our former FBI agent, ABC News contributor, Brad Garrett. Brad, they're calling this a strong person of interest. What do you think that says for where this investigation is heading? I think they appear to really have the right guy. And I'll tell you one thing quickly, what typically is the downfall of, of defendants is keeping things that attach them to a case, the gun, the manifesto. Uh, and those things are going to be critical to prosecuting him. And so that's really, the, it, it just is unbelievable and consistent with other cases, in particular in these high profile cases where it's clearly cause-driven. We don't know exactly what that means, but he clearly was on a mission. Uh, so, Brad, what are you watching for next now? What questions need to be answered to, to advance this now? So the, the key is, will he talk to NYPD when they get there to really break down motivation, where the weapon came from? In other words, everything they can get from him that links him to this case. I'll tell you, based on experience, that may take five minutes. That may take three or four hours. It really depends whether he wants to. Some people want to brag, Diane, about what they have done. 
because it's important to them. And we'll see if they can get him to that point. All right. So, again, a person of interest now in custody in the murder of United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson. Our thanks to Brad Garrett and Aaron Katursky. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live and ABCNews.com. And David Muir will have the latest here on World News Tonight. I'm Diane Macedo in New York. Have a great day.